childhood obesity is a growing epidemic and it's highly concerning and parents are very frustrated with this because they want to help their children but you know simple calorie restriction does not work for children it doesn't work for adults either right so we have to have better mechanisms to help children out to prevent them to become obese adults because i mean if we don't control this at a young age it is really really hard to control it later and it's not just the stigma of obesity and uh, you know things associated with aesthetically with it, but there are real health manifestations that can um, really, uh, that we can see later on. And some of those are type 2 diabetes, precocious puberty, polycystic ovarian disease, hypogonadism in boys, hypertension, heart disease, cancer, asthma, sleep apnea, and a poorly functioning immune system. These are just some of them. Now we know today that obesity is actually a risk factor for cancer. And that is also because obesity is linked to a poorly functioning immune system. And we've seen this during the pandemic where people with obesity had a very, very bad outcome a lot of times uh, during the last pandemic. So these are things that we know and we need to really intervene. So again, not just to help children you know, with their self-esteem, but also help them become healthy adults, right? So I wanna outline just a few of the causes that I think are most important here. Number one, processed foods. That is such a generic term, but when you think about it, what are processed foods? Of course, fast food, but then when we go to the supermarket, if you buy something in a package that has 50 ingredients of which we really only understand half of them, that's processed foods, right? There's bleached flour in there. There's high fructose corn syrup. There's preservatives. There's many ingredients that are really bad for us. The problem with processed foods is they're usually very low on protein. They don't have much nutritional value. They have a lot of junk in there that is bad for us. And also we'll just eat a lot of it, right? And kids that get processed foods, they, go they gobble this up and they keep eating, 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 eating. And it's really, really counterproductive to their weight, as it is for adults, unfortunately, right? So some of the main ingredients that I have an issue with are seed oils, then, of course, high fructose corn syrup, bleached flour, and all those. So how do you cut these out? How do you avoid these? We're going to get to that on the next section there. But essentially, you know, don't buy things in packages in a supermarket that have a lot of ingredients. Don't buy these, you know, crackers and don't buy these cereals and all these things. And we're going to talk about that in a second. But processed foods are basically, you know, foods that are, you know, contain bleached flowers and, and highly processed ingredients and a lot of junk we don't want, right? Number two, low protein foods. Um, just as for adults, um, children, you know, with each meal, we should prioritize protein for several reasons. One, good proteins is actually very important for children as they're growing. Secondly, uh, satiety so they make you full right when you eat protein you feel full you, you you don't eat a lot then you know most of the foods junk foods will have a very low protein content and a poor protein content at that right so low protein foods are a major issue right theory number three is lack of physical activity and that's actually very important i remember as a child i had about um in in school four hours every week of um uh, physical exercise right we had uh, sports in school four hours and it was really intense Today, they walk around campus. I mean, they don't do much anymore, right? Um, so I think that is a, a major issue. And then, of course, uh, devices. You know, we have electronics, computer games, and whatnot. They really contribute to sedentary life. I mean, because when kids are on these devices, they're like zombies. I see this in my kids. They just sit there and watch these things without moving a muscle. Uh, as soon as you take the devices away, they go outside and play, and they're active, right? Kids need to be active. And these devices are massively hindering that as well. And number four, poor sleep. Somewhat related to... Um, these devices, right, related to using iPhones, being on these uh, social media forums a lot, right? Um, kids have a hard time controlling that. And that's something that we as adults, re we really need to give them a schedule. So look, you can use this, use it hopefully for something that is uh, productive for you. But, you know, there's a certain time at which you definitely have to turn it off. And um, you need to be in bed at a certain time and don't use this device shortly before bedtime. These are very important things. Lack of sleep highly contributes to weight gain, right? These are all things. So if we influence those alone, we don't need to worry so much about total caloric intake. That's very difficult to do. But if we control the quality of the foods, we cut out the junk foods, right? If we control, um, you know, having exercise, having foods that are high in protein, and then uh, improving sleep, we will see that obesity will improve dramatically in children and they're gonna become healthier and, and functioning better, right? So what are some solutions here? Number one, dietary. And again, always discuss any changes, whether it's um, you know, nutrition, supplements, or medications, of course, with your pediatrician, that's very important. There may always be some underlying condition that I don't know about, obviously. And um, you need to discuss any changes you make with your pediatrician to make sure your child is okay with that. You know, Even as I recommend, increasing protein content. For some children, that might be an issue. For a healthy child, it's not, but for some people, it might be. So always discuss anything you do with your pediatrician, right? So 
when you go to the supermarket, opt for single ingredient foods. That's very important. For example, vegetable, fruit, dairy, meat, eggs, and so on, right? More difficult because you're going to have to cook from scratch sometimes, but it's sometimes also easy to combine. But the more foods you buy that are really single ingredient foods, and preferably if you can organic, especially when it comes to vegetables and fruit, um, if you peel the fruit, fine, not so important. But berries, for example, I would only buy organic. And if that's expensive, um, I'm doing, an, I have a recipe here for a protein shake that I actually use for my son. We buy um, frozen uh, organic strawberries and frozen organic blueberries. So then hopefully, as the label says, not sprayed with anything, but also it's cheap and it's frozen and stays fresh. Now you can't defrost them and use them. We've tried that and they got too mush, but if you blend them, it's fine. It's actually, they're great for that actually. Yeah? Um, prioritize protein with each meal. And that's actually very important. As I mentioned it before, of course, check with your pediatrician first. But uh, uh, we want to bring up protein, especially in the morning, as, as their first meal. If they start their first meal with junk food and with a lot of sugar and carbs, you know, this is not good for them. One, is not good for their weight, but it's also not good for their concentration in school. And they're going to be hungry again very soon, right? So starting out with protein in the morning is important. Now, for a growing child, you know, it depends on the age. Again, talk to the pediatrician. But my children, you know, they're 10 and 11. I mean, usually I would say in the morning, I'd like them to get at least 10 to 15 grams of protein for their breakfast if I can. And we're talking about healthy proteins here. Now, for children, I believe that children should get um, some animal products. And most of the proteins will be of an uh, animal type source, like a, even a whey protein or, or milk or yogurt, right? But also meats and all these things. Now, I think for adults, if you're vegetarian and vegan, most adults do fine with it and great. Um, a lot of the vegans that I know are, are highly intelligent. They know how to combine their foods and that works great for them. For a growing child, I would argue, and I've done a lot of reading on this, um, they do need more complete foods, which will include some uh, uh, animal-based foods as well. This is my opinion. Again, talk to your pediatrician if you feel differently about this. Um, but I think for a growing child, we should not limit them to a strict vegan diet yet. You know, later on as an adult, if you're over 18, you probably can do that if you, if you do it in the correct way. Absolutely. But for a child, I think they need a complete diet. So some people might not like that comment, but that's my very firm belief here after what I've read. Um, so I give you some examples that we do for breakfast. And here's the thing in the morning, and uh, most parents will know this, it's, you don't have much time in the morning, you know, you're struggling. So what we do at night now. I give them some choices. I said, look, here are three things that I can do for you in the morning. Which one do you like tomorrow morning? And then they kind of make their selection. <clears throat> that usually works well. If you just give them one thing, they might not eat it. And going to school hungry is not a good idea either, right? So number one, scrambled or boiled eggs. Try to get, if you can, um, pasteurized eggs. It doesn't have to be. And you usually make them with butter. So don't use any cooking oils like canola, soybean oil. Those are seed oils, remember? Big problem. That's usually in fast foods. It's terrible stuff. Not good for your child. So um, I think butter is, is actually very good. Grass-fed butter is great. It has a lot of vitamin K2, which is very important for uh, bone development as well. And it's a very good source of that. And then you add to that, you know, slice of um, a whole wheat toast, preferably organic bread, for example. That's one possibility that they like in the morning. And you can put a bit of um, a jam on there, like, you know, that's okay. There's a little bit of sugar, not too bad. But that with egg, that's one of the breakfast options that we usually have. Another one, it's a protein pancake. So the recipe is very simple. You do eggs. I use a whey protein powder that uh, very important. If you use a protein powder, again, talk to your pediatrician first. Uh, we use one that does not have um, artificial sweeteners in it, right? So natural sweeteners, like a little bit of, um, for example, um, xylitol or stevia is okay, um, but don't use anything with artificial sweeteners or anything that has a lot of sugar in it. So a real normal whey protein is actually fine, okay? And then a little pancake mix. You don't have to use too much of that because you have the whey protein in there and milk. So mix in that, uh, make a batch of pancakes. Sometimes I do it the day before and just warm them up in the morning. That's actually very easy to do. So you have a whole batch. Um, that's about, you know, uh, 10 grams of protein per pancake. I think that's actually a very good breakfast. Um, and that's an option. We use an allulose uh, syrup. So that's not a sugar syrup. So it's instead of sugar, they make it with allulose. And you can get this at Ralph's. And this basically is another natural sweetener um, that, you know, really doesn't have a lot of calories in that sense. And it's not a sugar that really spikes the insulin like crazy. Okay, another option is a protein smoothie. I've done that with my son lately. Frozen blueberries, as I mentioned, organic frozen strawberries. Flax and chia plus minus. Some kids don't like that. So you can add that or not. And then just, you know, again, whey protein powder and milk. 
And again, here for the whey and protein powder, I don't use more than about half a scoop, which is about 15 grams. And that's the maximum, I would say, for a growing child that you would want in one meal. Otherwise, it'd be too much protein, actually. And that works great. So my son, sometimes he just wants a protein shake like this. And, you know, you get them some uh, berries are very low uh, glycemic index. So that's one option. Now, I'm very interested, actually, what kind of foods uh, you uh, uh, give to your children that you feel are healthy, because, you know, I'd like to learn as well and see if there's anybody that has other ideas. These are just three options. There's, of course, a lot more than that. But these are options you can do from ingredients that will prioritize protein um, that are, you know, if you use fruit, anything should be organic. And also that minimizes uh, uh, sugars and, uh, of course, it cuts out seed oils and all that other uh, junk that you usually would have. And again, first meal, I think, is very important. Uh, it's very important that children have a good breakfast that has a certain amount of protein in it, right? Um, so here, another thing, what you should not buy, and that's actually very, very important. So besides um, focusing on um, single ingredient uh, uh, foods here, don't buy sugary snacks, cereals. Cereals are all horrible. Talked about magic spoon as sort of like that. That's a, that's a decent cereal. I wouldn't use it every day. It's pretty expensive as well. But the normal cereals in the cereal aisle, they will have a lot of bad things in there. You know, you're going to have a lot of preservatives in there. You're going to have food colors. Anything that says red 40 or blue one, anything that has a number after the color is terrible. I did a, a video about this. Um, in, in basically, they have um, a lot of heavy metals in there. They have a lot of, they're made from petroleum. I mean, there's a lot of junk in there. These are carcinogens. Most countries don't allow them. In, in Europe, you have to uh, put a warning label on it. A warning, it has these uh, food colors in there. This stuff is junk. We still allow it, uh, but we just should be mindful. The cereal aisle is terrible. I wouldn't, wouldn't buy anything there. That just doesn't work. Um, and then, you know, um, uh, fruit juices, I would avoid as well. A lot of sugar there. Gatorade and, and Prime and whatever they're called, that's junk. I know the advertising is heavily. Kids love this stuff. Um, but, you know, Prime even, you know, I say, oh, it has less sugar. If it has less sugar, if it's a low sugar Gatorade, guess what? Then they put uh, uh, artificial sweeteners in there, which might arguably be worse, especially for obesity, right? They disrupt the gut microbiome. Um, they cause a lot of havoc and they might be cancer causing as well. So then it's in a plastic bottle. It's all junk. So in my opinion, when kids uh, go to school at home, drink filtered water, um, just a regular activated carbon filter or reverse osmosis filter is fine. And then for school, I give them stainless steel cup and fill them water in there. You can add some lemon juice. They might like it, you know. If they want lemonade, I sometimes do uh, uh, organic lemon juice and a bit, tiny bit of stevia. Wouldn't do it all the time, but once in a while, that's fine. So if they don't drink enough and they need a bit of a sweet taste, that's okay to do. But everything that's a fruit juice or one of those Gatorade beverages and all that, I would really avoid that. You're really setting this high child up for more problems. These are all things that lead to more obesity. These are really bad things. So just Getting used to drinking water is absolutely a very good thing. And, you know, in school, most schools don't allow anything else anyway at this point. All right. Of course, artificial sweeteners, food colors, as I mentioned before, BHA and BHT. So uh, butylated hydroxy, uh, anisole and butylated hydroxy toluene, these are preservatives. Um, anything that says BHA or BHT, don't buy. That stuff is really bad. It is, um, you know, banned in, in Europe and in um, Australia, New Zealand and so on. Um, it is cancer causing and it's an endocrine disruptor. Another thing for a growing child, you don't want anything that disrupts the hormones. That also includes plastic products, right? You don't want to use plastic bottles, but also you don't want to heat anything in plastics. If you have Tupperware, make sure, you know, glass, again, that's of course breakable. So, but if you give them something for school, make sure they don't heat up anything in a plastic container. If it's cold, it's fine in plastic. But if you heat it up, there's a lot of these chemicals that, that leak into the food. And these are endocrine disruptors, so they mess up hormones. This is really bad for developing child, a horrible thing. All right. And um, okay in moderation. Now, this is not a list of something that is very good. So if you talk about snacks, well, what about real life? Now, we have, um, we try not to get candy and all that stuff. Sure, makes sense. What can we once in a while give a child that is not the worst? So again, these are by no means healthy options, but they're snacks that I think um, to have a, you know, uh, realistic daily uh, life at home, you want to have something that the child can, because otherwise they're going to go to their friends house and they guzzle all that candy, right? And of course, the easy stuff that's always okay is fruit then, not, not too much, but in you know, sliced fruit, um, they kind of like that. Uh, beef jerky is another sort of healthy option, a lot of salt there though, and I only put that on there because my daughter started eating that lately. Beef jerky, I think, is actually fairly healthy to eat, besides all the salt that's in there. 
And also it trains their chewing, trains their uh, uh, jaw muscles, which is very important for healthy development of teeth. That's another talk I'm going to do, but um, having a bit of a resistance to chewing is important. So if they like beef jerky, I think in moderation, it could be, it could be a snack. And then the, on the less healthy side, milk chocolate, uh, Lindt is a pretty good company. Of course, you will have some sugar in there, but in, in, I, I prefer milk chocolate much over candy and cereals or ice cream, as long as there's no um, artificial food colors in there or any preservatives. Most ice cream, you will have um, heavy cream. They might have some, some protein content in there. And as long as there's no food coloring or preservatives, I think ice cream is okay as well in moderation. Again, these are not healthy things. So just want to be clear on that. But realistic, you want to have maybe something once in a while as a treat. And I think that's healthier than most other things that you can get them at the, at the supermarket, right? Point number two, what else can we do to decrease uh, obesity to help children be healthy? Of course, is exercise. I think it's important to enroll them in a team sport, either at school or, or separately. It could be soccer or taekwondo or basketball, but something they do at least two to three times a week for an intense hour. It's also good to have team sport to interact with other kids. You're not only interacting on your device. A lot of children I see now that don't participate in sports, they sit all home on their computer and that's their social interaction with other kids. And it's really setting them up for this very sedentary life. And also they lose the ability to interact with people one-to-one, uh, -one, which is really, really bad. So these team sports, I think, are very, are very important. Um, they also um, uh, uh, learn a lot of you know, other things there, the social skills and all that kind of stuff there. So that is very important. And then number two is having at least a 10 minute, at least if it's minimum, where they run around outside. This could be uh, walking the dog, it could be going for a walk, going for a run, but on a daily basis, they need to get out of the house. I mean, ideally um, uh, running, jogging, walking, whatever, you know, something that's fun, riding a bicycle, but that's very important. And we got to kind of uh, push that a bit as, uh, as parents. We got to say, look, you know, now it's time for you to do that. Uh, very, very important, okay? Um, limit device time is number three, and that's actually super important. I mentioned this earlier, so they're way too much on these devices. Uh, and it uses the sedentary lifestyle, especially it disrupts also their sleep uh, cycle at night when they're on too late. So we have a rule during the week, we usually allow one hour of device time. Um, they usually exceed that somehow, but we're trying to limit it to that. And the weekends up to two hours, depending, but we try to keep them more busy on the weekends. Now, the issue that I have is using devices at night. Uh, for us, the, the cutoff is uh, 7.30 at night. They can't use devices anymore. I think it's important because Remember this blue light from the devices, also the content they're watching that is very fast paced, let's say TikTok videos, it really stimulates the brain and it's hard for them to sleep afterwards. Lack of sleep, uh, going to bed too late, not getting um, enough uh, quality sleep overnight is another contributor to obesity. So just by regulating sleep, by having a set bedtime, by having you know eight to 10 hours at least of sleep every night, healthy sleep for a child, we can decrease uh, um, their body weight actually. Okay, so again, so in, in, in total, I think the most important things will be, of course, dietary, cutting out all the junk foods, having more single ingredient foods, making sure they don't snack between meals, make sure that we don't have snacks that are very sugary snacks at home, make sure to start at least the day with high protein, very important, so it sets up the day. Um, and then, of course, school lunches, we got to see what they're eating there. Some school lunches are terrible, some are very good, depending, you know, and your pediatrician might have some tips there as well, right? Also, what you pack for them, this is important as well. Then, um, of course, the exercise is hugely important and it's really something that we, unfortunately, the, the schools don't do such a good job with this anymore. Um, so I think we have to intervene. And I think most pediatricians will agree on this, that physical activity has declined a lot and it's, it's one of the major issues of obesity and disease, unfortunately, in, in, in children, right? Device time uh, and that also factors into sleep time, right? So I think these are very simple points we can do. Again, simple calorie restrictions, I think, is not working well with children. Um, giving them good choices and um, having options that are protein rich, I think are important. And if you have um, you know, recipes for things that you feel are healthy, please share them. Please subscribe and leave a comment or, or question. I definitely read those. And like I said, they can contribute tremendously to having more information for other people as well.